Lizette, don't you put that picture out there, girl. I will pull your ears. Man. <laughs> she took a picture of me. Why? Get that. Get that. Get that phone and delete it. Delete that. Because then I'll put the, the spa out there. <laughs> we have pictures of each other. <laughs> Amen. Now, the Lord is good. Amen. The, the, the joy you can feel in the atmosphere, the, the goodness of God. Amen. Uh, 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 I love our church, not because I'm the pastor of the church. I love the church. I love the atmosphere of our church. Amen. That's right. Amen. You know, it's just uh, a lot of love. Uh, visitors always come and they tell me, that church is full of love. Amen. And, and that means that you guys are full of love because you guys are the church. Amen. And we're loving people. And we're blessing people. Amen. And that's what it's about, man. Uh, uh, don't be afraid to hug on somebody, you know. Don't be afraid to go up and tell them your name, you know. You think they know your name, you know, because you see them all the time. But if, when you guys get near me, I say, what's her name? And you're like, uh, sister? Yeah. <laughs> Brother, you know, we should know each other's names, you know. It, we're family, amen. We're all family. You're no better than me, and I'm no better than you. We're just better than what we used to be, amen. We got the air on right now. It's, it's cold, but that's how I'm going to keep you guys up, you know. You guys, you guys want to be falling asleep on me or nothing like that. Uh, we're going to be talking about a, a man after uh, God's own heart today, you know, uh, chasing God, man. Uh, that uh, we're, we're new. We're new people now. You ladies are brand new ladies now. Amen. Old things have passed away. All things have become new now. Amen. And uh, uh, last week I just felt the unity. You know, uh, I know the ladies uh, and some of you men have talked to me, you know, that, man, we need to get our ladies up where our men are at. I, I think they're there now. I think they're there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, there's some that don't believe. We'll just uh, bring, we'll, we'll bring them, we'll pull on them, amen, until they believe in Jesus' name. No, but uh, I'm only joking around. But uh, uh, it's good to be united and be as one, amen. And that's what we're supposed to be. Even uh, don't matter what denomination you come from, what religious background, if you're in Christ, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Amen. Behold, check it out. Old things have passed away and all things have become new now. We're living a new life. We're learning. Ozzy, we're learning how to live this new life. Amen. We got rid of Lefty. That brother died, you know, years ago. Amen. He's out. Amen. You know, all your nicknames, they're all gone. They're over, they're buried. They don't even let them talk about that old man. I don't even know what you're talking about, man. He's dead. God doesn't even talk about it. Why am I going to let you talk about it? Amen. And we begin to live a new life, you know, in Jesus' name. And just allow the Lord right now, as you sit under the word, allow the word of God to speak to you. Because this word is alive. This word is not dead. This word represents Jesus, and Jesus represents this word, and there's no way you can change this word. No way. This word wasn't for you to uh, change it. It was made for to change you. Amen. And if you allow the Spirit of God to speak through the word and speak to you, receive it. Don't duck from the rocks, you know. If pastor says something that's not pastor, it's the Spirit of God saying things, and you guys are like, whoo. That was close. That rock almost hit me. Let the rock hit you. Let the rock hit you. It's okay, man. A, a, a good spanking will, will teach a child something. Amen? The, the Bible says that uh, if you don't spank a child, they'll embarrass you. They'll embarrass you with their behavior here and there. Amen? Out in public, they will embarrass you. But if you take it to them here and there... Joe's like, oh, man, he's telling my mom like she can spank me. <laughs> you know, uh, we ain't going to abuse him, but, you know, good three little licks, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You know, that'll, that'll straighten him up, man. 
I was just talking right now, and I said the first one stings them so bad that they don't even feel the second and third one. Uh, they're like, oh, the first one was a stinger, boy. I don't know if you ever had a spanking like that or a whipping. I don't even call it sp uh, spankings. They're whippings, boy. I've had whippings. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Start breaking down on you guys. <laughs> no, they were good. I'm, I thank God for my father. He was a, he was a tough old man, uh, uh, and he did well. He did well for seven of us, Art. They could have, you know, only one of us lost our lives, you know, out there. But, you know, uh, a lot of us could have been dead, you know. And he saved us. He saved our lives in a lot of times. You know, so I thank God for that old man, man. He was rough, tough. Can't get enough. Oh, no, let's go on. Amen. <laughs> let's, let's pray. So we're going to be talking about a, a man after God's own heart. And uh, uh, you're going to recognize some traits in Saul, how Saul and David were two different men. Both anointed, both appointed by God, but two different men. One, one obeyed God and trusted God, and the other didn't. And he paid the price for it. Your disobedience has a, a consequence to it. Amen? Your choices, right or wrong, they have a consequence to them. If you choose, li if you choose life, you're going to get life. And you're going to get it more abundantly. But if you choose death, you're going to get that thing and it's going to hurt. It hurts when we make a wrong decision. Right? And we can't blame other people. You know, because we made that decision. But other people can pay the price for that decision. So we have to learn how to make the right decision in Jesus' name. So we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Welcome Turning Point Fellowship on Facebook right there. YouTube, thank you for showing up. Thank you guys all for being here. Remember, this is the house of the Lord. You can raise your hands. You can clap your hands. You can move to the left. You can move to the right. You can groove if you like to. But all in Jesus. Amen. Amen. All in Jesus Christ. This isn't a house of bondage. It's a house of liberty. So you can give a shout. Amen. You can say hallelujah. You can give an amen. So uh, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to be part of it. A couple of visitors said, oh, you guys have a participating church. I'm like, okay, uh, whatever that means. And it, no, they get to say hallelujah and amen and all that. I said, oh, yeah. I even call them by their names. And I'm not calling you to put you out there and blast or embarrass you guys, you know. Calling you because you're my friend, you know. Amen. We're friends and we can, we can minister to one another. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives and our salvation. Father, we're going to be glad, Father. We're going to be rejoicing in you for this is the day that you have made. Father, we're so grateful and so thankful that you chose us to serve you, to be called a bondservant, Lord God, of the Most High. What an honor it is to be called a child of God, a son and a daughter, Lord. Father, what an honor it is to hear your voice within us and out of us, Lord God, and that we get enriched by your word. It's an honor to say the name of Jesus. What a privilege it is to bow before you and worship before you. What an honor it is to be called a Christian, a Christ-like. We are like Christians. We are like Christ. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you for the divine protection over our minds, over our hearts, over our ears, our, our mouth, and our eyes. That we would only speak what you say, Lord God. We would only hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And we would only follow where you lead and you direct us, Lord God. Teach us that we would know your ways. So, Father, we thank you for our children that are here. We thank you that they're divinely protected. We say the evil and the wicked one is removed from their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for every parent right here, Father, for every aunt, for every uncle, for every cousin, Lord, for every nephew, for every niece. I thank you for their lives in Christ Jesus. I say they're getting better and they're getting wiser because they hear your word. And we know the faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word, Father. So today we receive faith and we're going to be better for it, Lord God. Thank you for the impartation of your wisdom, of your righteousness and of your knowledge. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you for the joy and the love that we have for one another and for those that are lost and hurting. For the backslider, Lord God, give us a heart. Give us the courage to go win a soul, Lord God. We ask for cars. We ask for husbands and wives. We ask for money. We ask for our bills to be paid, Father. I pray that we would ask for souls, Lord, that you would give us a soul that we could mentor and we could teach and Uh, Father, relate to and they can relate to us in the love and the understanding of who we are in Christ. We're not judging nobody. That's not our call. That's your call, Father. But, Father, we're here to understand them, Lord, to love on them. So show us how to do this. We're going to bless you. We're going to honor you right now with our worship, with our praise, Father. We're going to do it, Father, out of an attitude of gratitude. We're grateful, truly grateful for saving our lives and forgiving us our sins. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We honor you right now as we come together as a community, as a family, Lord. I pray, Father, that this sound will be a sweet sound unto you. I pray in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said, Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have our worship team up here. Praise God. Let's have our worship team up here. (laughs) Hallelujah. Glory, God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on now. Come on. I know you got that fire in you. So you've been asking for that fire. Let that fire. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. All through the week I've been hearing about miracles, miracles, miracles here left and right. I know God is doing something right now. I know God is doing something in your life right now. But this is how we fight our battles right here, right now. Amen. Come on, worship your God with everything you got. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Get excited. Hope you're rubbing. Go sate, go sate. Darkness shaking, faith is rising. We know, we know, we know. We heart be racing, living in your freedom. Joy overflowing. We know, we know, we know. We know, we know, we know. Our hope, our hope for. Is alive. I hope forever. I hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. Passion. Passion burning. Vision growing. The church. The church. Are we alive? Our hope. Our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. Come on, give him a shout of victory. Hallelujah.
Let's show them what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope. Our hope forever. In the name of Jesus, we are free and you are with us. The church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope for hope forever. Everyone moving, everyone clapping their hands. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is one more time. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. When the church is alive. I hope. When the church is alive, the church is alive. When the church is alive, the church is alive. When the church is alive, the church is alive. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, let your voices be heard. Let your voices be heard. Hallelujah! Glory to the King! Glory to the King! To the Lord of Lords! Yes, sir. Freedom in this place. Freedom in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, some of you need to jump on this river. Deep 
Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the street. Bring up a world. Bring up a world. Bring up a world in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We're dancing in the street. We're dancing in the street. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well in me. We're dancing in the street. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. Nothing can stop this joy. Nothing can stop this joy. Declare that out. Nothing can stop this joy. 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 Bring up a well in me. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Bring up a well in me. Bring up a well. Bring up a well. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Lord, thank you. Glory be to you. This well living life, hallelujah. This well that gives joy. Gives joy. Lord, we give you Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, Worship your God, worship your God, worship your God. Hallelujah. You are here.
Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. God never stops working. He'll never slow down for us. We were just singing about the river that flows. God is like a mighty river. All you got to do is just jump in. Amen. It's just like standing at the edge of the, of the river and watching the beauty of it, watching the strength of it go by. And you're like, man, I wonder how it feels to get in there. Well, you got to jump in. And that's what we're doing right here in praise and worship. We're just worshiping our God. He's an alive God. Amen. He's a God of miracles. He never stops doing a miracle. Even if we don't believe, he still does miracles. Amen. I've said this many, many years. Someone in Africa right now is being raised from the dead. Someone in Australia is receiving their sight. Amen. Someone in Mexico is hearing all over again. Amen. Somewhere out there in the world, Saudi Arabia, Iran, wherever, the walk, the lame are walking. Lives are being restored. You just have to believe. Just believe God and trust God's word. Don't trust your feelings. Your feelings go in and out. Some days you believe God and some days you don't believe God. And that's what we're learning here at Turning Point Fellowship. We got to learn to just believe God all the time. Learn to trust God all the time. Amen. When you got money in your pocket or you don't have money in your pocket. Amen. When you feel well or don't feel well, you got to learn to trust God and you got to learn to bless God. Amen. So go ahead, guys, have a seat, man. It's, a, it's always a pleasure to, to praise God with you guys and bless the Lord. I know the Lord is pleased, you know, so uh, just want to encourage you guys in the house of God. I said before, this is a house of freedom. You know, you see people with their hands up, you see them moving. Don't look at them like they're, uh, oh, my, man, they're crazy. <laughs> hey, you used to dance for the devil. Right? So throw out hips and all that stuff, you know. Thought you were pop lockers and breakers and all that stuff, you know. So do all that stuff out there, act all crazy. You didn't care back then, you know. And all of a sudden you get saved and you get all sanctified and holy and you can't even praise God anymore, you know. He's the one that brought you out of that mess, you know. Amen. You got to thank him, man. You got to bless God for what he's done in your life. Some of you are alive, and you shouldn't even be alive. Amen. But God has you alive, and it's for a purpose. It's for a reason. The only reason you haven't known your purpose and your reason of life is you never asked God, what is my purpose? What is my reason? You know, and it may be those people in your house. <laughs> Get them saved. Love on them. They've never been loved on some of the people. Amen. They live around you. They need a hug. They need a good morning, just a good morning. What about a good morning? You know, some of you guys need a good morning, you know, amen. We've got to learn how to smile, man. You're alive, you're well, you're saved. Your name's written in the last book of life, amen. That's a guarantee of God. That's God's word. When you get saved, he writes down your name, and he knows your name. What an honor to have you, my little, my little brother right here, man. Praise God. It, it's, it's beautiful to have the Lord here. Many times we say, oh, Lord, you know, uh, we welcome you into this place. <laughs> That's wrong. This is God's house. We're welcomed in his presence. Amen. We're welcome to him. This, this is where we praise God and this is where we bless God. Right here. Amen. You can bless God wherever you want. But on a Sunday we gather corporately. To worship God and bless God. Yeah, you see the people at the altar. That's how it was in Israel. They came to the altar. They worshiped around the altar. We're not doing anything different than the Israelites. They danced and they had tambourines and they spin and they had chiffons, uh, uh, whatever they're called, those, what are those things, scar scarves. They were flying those and they're flying flags. The flags represent uh, victory. Different colors represent different things in life. And when they, had, when they took land, they would stand on top of the mountain and the man would just, big old flag. And he would just let the other 12 tribes know that, you know what, we took the land. It's ours. Amen. And this is how we're to live too. So when you see people excited, don't put no wet blanket on them. 
Let them worship God. Let them bless God. Amen. Join in. Join in. God will probably do something. Not probably. He will do something in your life. Amen. I was that type of guy like you that just stood there. I didn't do nothing. I was like, oh, they're tripping, man. This is crazy. That's how when I first started coming to church, this is nuts. But once I jumped, man, it was over. I jumped one time, just jumped up straight up and came straight down. And after that, my life has never, ever been the, cha- the same through Jesus Christ. Amen. I celebrate the life I live today, you know, and I, I'm glad that the Lord gave me life. Amen. And more abundantly, you know, more joy, more kindness, more love, more forgiveness, more mercy. That's the love that God gives us. Amen. The life that he, he gives us. And we have to understand that as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ. You got to learn to smile. You know, amen. We're going to go ahead and receive our tithe and our offering. If you need an envelope, these handsome, these handsome married men will get you an envelope. Raise your hand up high. It's not time to take a lunch break or a, a, a restroom break or anything like that. It's time to bless the Lord. And if you, uh, you didn't bring no cash, uh, you're out of checks. It's all right. It's all right. That phone number right there can get you right in there. Amen. Mark that phone number down right there, 714-477-7736. One more time, 714-477-7736. That's the number there. Dial that number, hit, uh, hit the prompt, and you'll get right into where you can donate and give there. Give a free will offering in Jesus' name. Give out of a grateful heart and a thankful heart. Don't give because I'm asking you. You give because you're grateful to God. I'm, I'm thankful that God saved my life. I thank you that I'm different now. Amen? That God did a work in your life. Praise God. So give in Jesus' name.
Yahweh, 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 you reign. Yahweh, 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 you reign. Yahweh, 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 you reign. Yahweh. on <laughs> hallelujah we're gonna have pastor eric come on up here and uh pray for it give him a mic everybody needs a mic hallelujah. i hope i can sing as well as you do <laughs> let's stretch your hands lord father in the name of jesus you said in malachi that if we bring the tithe and offering to the storehouse you would open up the windows of heaven and pour a blessing upon your people Lord, we declare that the heavens are opened up, according to Isaiah 64, Lord. The heavens are opened up over Turning Point, over every member of Turning Point Fellowship in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that we will not stop giving. Instead of decreasing, we will increase our giving, Lord, by faith. Because we know that you are God that watched over your word to perform it. So, Lord, we release these funds right now. We say this building is paid for. We thank you the bills are paid for. We will not lack in everything for this family, for these youth. They will not lack, Lord, in Jesus' name, for you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. And everyone said, amen. Yeah. There you go, Mr. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our worship team. All right, praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> Thank the Lord, amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our children and our youth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Come on, let's give them a good round of applause. Celebrate your children. If you don't celebrate them, somebody else will. Learn to celebrate your children. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Whoo wee, man. If that don't fire you up, I don't know what will, man. If the praise and worship here at Turning Point doesn't fire you up, man. Uh, you need to shake yourself off in Jesus' name. We're going to do uh, our profession of faith, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, get into our word. We're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 13. But right now we're going to do our profession of faith. <laughs> Jesus looking at me like, pump the brakes. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive, about to receive. The, incorruptible, the incorruptible, the indestructible, indestructible. ever living seed, seed of the word of, God. the word of God. I'll never be the same. Be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right, Bible thumpers, there you go. You may be seated in the presence of our Father. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, he is there in the midst of us. Amen. So I want you to know that God is here with us. He's in the midst. And he's going to teach us his word right now as you uh, find 1 Samuel chapter 13. You know, uh, just been praying on now that we've entered into our land that the Lord had promised us, you know, uh, we're here in. Santa Ana, I never thought I would be in Santa Ana, to be honest with you, you know, uh, hey, 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 but here I is, you know, <laughs> a kid, a kid from uh, Compton, California out here in the big OC now, you know, now that's what I say, the big OC now, you know, I'm getting hit with you guys, <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about Saul and David and the contrast of 
who they were as men, both appointed to be kings, both anointed by God, God chosen, both of them, but one grew in success and the other one faded out. Why? And the same thing happens with Christians in their lives. You know, there's Christians that are on fire and full of life, and, man, you can't stop them talking about God. And I know for you religious folks that are out there and the people that are on camera, you religious folks, you know, you hear these Christians talking about the Lord, and you're like, oh, man, and here comes that brother, man. All he does is talk about Jesus. And you're a Christian. All right. Yeah, I know I'm preaching good. When it gets quiet, I know I'm doing good. Amen. <laughs> You know, uh, we don't even want to hear them. We don't even want to be around them. They, they irk you. I, I had a little brother. He still comes here to the church. The man was on fire. He, he came straight from uh, prison, straight out of Chino uh, State Prison, and he came to the church here, and he's never left. He's been here for 10 years. He's never left. Amen. And God has changed his life. But, 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 he, but he went through a cycle. You go through a cycle. You go through a process where you're on fire, and oh yeah, praise the Lord, glory to God, and shane hamore, and you, you know, you're just whipping it up for God, quoting scripture, you know, greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. You're on fire. Then all of a sudden, life hits, and boom, oh my God, hey, we're going to go to church Thursday, ah, uh, I don't feel like going really, man, uh, now go ahead, you go, I'll go next week. That's one strike already. Because when you stop saying yes to God and his ways, it gets easier to say no to God all the time. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. It's happened to all of us. I'm a pastor. It happens to me. You know, you think I want to be up here all the time? You know, there's times like, man, I want to be at home too. You know, but I say, I know I got to be there. I got to go. Amen. We got to go preach the gospel. We got to go and share the love and the understanding, the knowledge that God has given one to for everyone, amen? amen. But we get that. We, you know, we get that pushback from the world, and that's where you find out who you are as a Christian. If you can last. And sometimes you will get to the back of the line. The line's going, and you're stepping back. Instead of going forward, you're going backwards, doing the little Michael Jackson move, you know. But then all of a sudden something hits you again and a refreshing comes. Because there's a recycle, there's a there's a process that God is doing in your life. And and don't look at that. You missed it. Don't look at it that you fell back. Don't look at it that you backslid. Don't look at it that, you know what, uh, I don't know if I'm a Christian. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Because the Bible says we're not ignorant to his devices. We're not ignorant to his lies. We know it's a lie. It's a lie. You're still a Christian. I've told many men and many women here, I don't give you the right. I don't, I don't have that right to tell you if you can smoke, drink, get high, cuss, do whatever. That's between you and God. I would advise you not to do it. Because some of you say, oh, I can have one beer. Well, if you're the, the tendency to have one beer and then have another, and then have another, and then have another, I'll puff just one time, and then, you know, have another puff and another puff, it's going to take you out. That, that's, the, that's the ploy of the enemy. My father used to tell me this when, when, he was, uh, when I was a kid. I said when he was a kid. When I was a kid. I used to talk to him about this stuff. He was a preacher. He was a, a man of God. And I would talk to him and he would say, don't blame the 20 beers you had over the weekend. Don't blame the 20. Blame the first one. Because it's the first one that got you. And I like, I wasn't catching it back then, you know, because I was full of myself. Then when you get older and you start getting a little wiser, because as you get older, you should get wiser. Right? I hope we don't remain foolish like when we were in our teens and, and our 20s. That's why I say, when you're in your 20s, you ain't learned nothing yet. You got a long way to go. Your 30s, you're beginning to learn some things. In your 40s, you've learned a lesson or two. By your 50s, you should already have learned about life. The Bible says you're a foolish man, you know, if you don't take the instruction of the word. Amen? And, and we, we should not be foolish people as Christians. We need to learn to grow. Amen? But there's a process that goes on, and as you go through that process, and we're going to read this with Saul and David, that you grow. You grow in your faults. You grow in your shortcomings. You grow in your sin. You grow. If you look at it in the right perspective, I blew it. I messed up. I need to ask God for forgiveness. 
And that's all it takes. That's how simple it is. That's how real it is. Did you just ask God, forgive me for my sins? God is just and faithful to forgive us all our sins, the Bible says, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you would just ask. But sometimes pride sets in. Sometimes that, that film of, uh, of hardness sets in on your heart. And you can't even ask for forgiveness no more. Oh, he's not going to forgive me. Who knows the mind of God? None of us. He shares his mind with us because we have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. He shares his spirit because the spirit of the living God lives within us. So we should have some discernment. We should have some know better in our lives. Amen. And as you get older, you grow more sensitive to God. We start losing our lives. You know, our lives go up like this. And some of us are at the peak of our lives. Some of us are getting right there. And some of us are already over. Now it's time, you know, we're coming down slowly. I don't mean you're going to die tomorrow or anything like that. You just hit the peak now and now you're, you're coming down. And we have to, we have to learn. We have to learn how to be Christians. It's, a, it's a, a practice. It's an open book test. If you fail, the answers are in here. Just look for the answers. It ain't called cheating in the Bible. God wants you to open up the book and get the answers. Get the answers for your life. Oh, I should have already known that. You should have, but you didn't, and now you can. And that's how life is. I've been saved for 28 years. I, I gave my life to the Lord a, a long time ago. I'm not going to give you guys the math because you're going to figure out my age, you know. But 28 years ago, I, I gave myself to the Lord. And I told the Lord, I said, God, all these years I've wasted in my life. If you're truly God and you truly can save my life, I'm going to give you the same amount of life that I gave to the devil. I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to ask you to change my life in those years. And if you don't change my life in those years, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the world. I would be an old man, you know, but God has changed my life. Drastically. And it's by the power of the Spirit and the power of his word that he changes our life. And I know some of you guys think that, oh, man, it's a dud being a Christian. Oh, it's boring being a Christian. You know why it is? Because you're a boring person. You're, you're, you're just boring. Even if the only reason you can get life in you is when you start drinking and getting high. All of a sudden, oh, yeah, party, party, yeah, yeah, yeah. But before that, you were a dud. At home, you were a dud. But once you get a couple of drinks in you now, you know, you start singing the song, the town I live in is long. You start, you start singing all these oldies and stuff like that, and you're out there dancing, practicing in your room. Because you're loaded now. You're high. But in Christ, this joy is always in you. Amen. When you're in Christ, you, you always have a gladness in your heart. And people say, oh, you're fake, you're phony. It's not. It's real. You can smile every day of your life. You can walk with a bounce in your step. Like, man, I'm glad I'm alive. You don't have to walk like this no more. And you know the phones, they train us to walk that way. You watch anybody on a phone. They don't, I see kids, they walk out in the crosswalk without even looking up. I said, them brothers got a lot of trust in people, boy. We were taught to look to the left and to the right, and when it's clear, then you cross, right? They're, they're just, and people snatch them by the arm like, whoa, when a car goes by, like, my God, they were about to die for that phone. Look before you cross. And the same thing with us as Christians. Look around you and see the beauty of God and the goodness of God. Because that's what he's given us. He's given us life. And he says, I come to give him life and life more abundantly. Amen. It's a life that overflows. It's a life that's full of joy, full of gladness, full of hope. Even when you don't get what you want, you're still glad. Because you trust God and say, you know what, he didn't give me that for a reason. Because some of you have asked to be married. Six months, a years later, you're saying like, man, I wish I was never married. <laughs> you know? 
You, you, yeah, you, people raising their hands like, yeah, amen. <laughs> and other brothers can't raise their hands, you know. <laughs> and vice versa, the same thing. You ladies ask for a man, oh, I got to have that man. Look at him. He's fine. He's so good. And look at him, yeah. And then you get him, you're like, oh, he's a jerk, Lord. Get, get him on. <laughs> right? So that's why we have to pray. When you don't have money, pray. When, when you feel sick, pray. When you're healthy, pray. When you have money, pray. When you're sad, pray. When you're happy, pray. Amen. When you're feeling down, pray. When you're feeling up, pray. Pray always, the Bible says. Pray about everything. Never cease praying. And that's the thing. We lose our communication with our Heavenly Father. We'll say good morning to Him and never talk to Him throughout the day. Good morning, Father. Thank you for waking me up. And that's the last thing you say to him. And that's why at the end of people's lives, you'll say, I never knew you. I never knew you. you. You said you knew me, but you and I never had a relationship. You and I never talked throughout the life. You know, all the years that you walked on this earth, we never had a conversation. And that's what the relationship's about, not religion. It's a relationship. Serena, just talking to them. When you're cleaning, when you're chasing those dogs out the house, you know, <laughs> you, you have a conversation with God. I'm not going to tell them you kick the dogs or anything like that, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but you know that we should have a relationship with God. And here we go with 1 Samuel, guys. 1 Samuel 13. I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's 24. Verses, then uh, 23 verses. Then I'm going to come back and explain it. But I'm going to give you a little or, overview right here. This is when Israel goes to war with the Philistines, which were their, like a natural enemy of, of Israel. And Saul, can I have my water right there, Hugo, please? Uh, and Saul is the king. Remember, God didn't want Israel to have a king. If you guys read your Bible, he didn't want them to have a king. He, he wanted to be their king. He wanted to be their ruler. He loved them. But they wanted a king. And there's sometimes us in life, God doesn't want you to have things, but you keep begging, you keep asking. And the Lord says, okay, I'm going to let you have it. And when he says, I'm going to let you have it, he means, I'm going to let you have it. Then you're going to be complaining later on, so you better pray. Amen. Yep, Exactly got to watch what you pray for and what you ask for. So here we go. Let me put on my aids right here. Saul was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 42 years over Israel. Now Saul chose for himself 3,000 men of Israel, of which 2,000 were with Saul and Michmash. I'm going to pronounce it that way. Uh, and then in the hill of Bethel, while a thousand were with Jonathan and Gebi and the, of Benjamin. But he sent away the rest of the people, each to his tent. They chose 3,000 and they told the other, uh, whoever was left, to go ahead and go home. Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in uh, Geba, And the Philistines heard of it. Then Saul blew the trumpet throughout the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. All Israel heard the news that Saul had spited, that he had killed the garrison of the Philistines. And also that Israel had become uh, obvious uh, to the Philistines. The people were then summoned to Saul and Gilgal. Now, Philistines, now, now the Philistines assembled to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horses, and the people like sand, which were on the seashore, in abundance. And they came up and they camped in Michmash, east of Beth Avon. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in strait, for the people who were, uh, were hard pressed, and the people hid themselves in caves and, and uh, thickets and cliffs and cellars and in pits. 
Also, some of the Hebrews crossed the Jordan into the land of Gad and Gilead. But as for Saul, he was still in Gilgad. And all the people followed him trembling. People were hiding and people were going in different places. And the same thing, when we're hard-pressed in life, instead of coming to Christ, we hide. Instead of coming to church, no, we go to our compadre's house, we go to our comadre's house, we go to our friend's house that know nothing about God, know nothing about the Word of God, and you're asking them for advice as a Christian. To me, that's kind of silly. I don't go to the world for advice. I'll go to men that I seem seasoned in my life and seasoned in their lives, and I go to them for advice. I have two pastor friends that I go to. And they speak into my life, and I listen to them. And that's how we should be. We shouldn't be going to the world and asking them, oh, what do you think? Should I go to church? You know what they're going to say? No, man, you ain't got to go to church. You can have your own relationship with God right here, bro. You know, you ain't got to go to church. Who says that? The Bible does. The Bible says not to forsake the gathering of the brotherhood. We're to gather with one another. You that are going to, uh, on your own and you're on your own and, you know, you're standing up mighty. Tell me how that's going. Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't go very well. It doesn't. We, we need help. We need each other. Amen. We need the strength of each other. We need the camaraderie of one another. We need. I need you and you need me. Can I get an amen, Art? Amen. And I've been talking to people on Facebook already for like two years that we never stopped having church, even through the pandemic. We, we always had church. We didn't stop. Our doors were open all the time. We pressed God. We pressed through. People wore masks. People didn't wear masks. I was getting ridiculed and called a sissy and all this and that, all kinds of stuff. I didn't care. I was serving God. And that's how it's supposed to be. These people are hiding. They're supposed to serve God. So here we go. Okay, verse 8. Now he waited seven days according to the appointed time set by Samuel. The prophet had talked to Saul, the king, and said, you got to wait seven days, and I'm going to hear from God. The prophet said this. I'm going to hear from God, and I'm going to go tell you the instruction that God has given us. But there's times that we don't wait. We go ahead of God. Oh, I heard from God. Really? Well, we just prayed 30 seconds ago, and you already heard from God. I'm not saying that can't happen. It does happen. But there's times that we must wait at times in our lives and hear from God truly what God has to say and what God is doing. Can I get an amen? amen. You got to wait on God. And that's why we suffer with our choices sometimes, right? Amen. We make some wrong choices, and then we want, oh, Father, where were you? I was here. You never even talked to me. You never even asked me. This is your choice. This is your life. This is what you made of it, right? Now he waited seven days according to the appointed time by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgai, and the people were scattering from him. They were afraid, and the people began to leave Saul. They began to go their own ways. Like, man, this dude's going to get us killed. So Saul said, bring to me the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, and he offered the burnt offerings. As soon as he finished offering the burnt offerings, behold, check it out. That word, check it out. Behold means check it out. Check it out. Samuel came and uh, uh, Saul went out to meet him and greet him. Check out what the prophet says to the king. This was his advisor. Samuel said, what have you done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattering from me and you did not come within the appointed days. And that Philistine was assembling in, in uh, Michmash. Therefore, I said, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal. And I have not asked the favor of the Lord. So I forced, so I forced, so I forced myself and offered a burnt offering. Sometimes we force the decision and we say it was God. Yes, then two months later we say, oh, 
I guess God didn't want me to have it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. That was your own decision. That was not God's decision. It was not a word from God. It was you being impatient. Oh, God told me to marry her. God told me to marry him. When? Right now. No. God told me to buy that car that's like $750 a month. You know, I got to have that 740 Beamer. You know, I got to have that 550 uh, Mercedes. Got to have it. God told me. No. No. You want it. But can you afford the maintenance? That payment's going to be from $750 to about $900 with insurance. Because those cars cost a lot of insurance. Amen. So we have to learn to be patient with God. Amen. So Sam says, what have you done? Okay, he saw that. Let's go to 12. Therefore I said, now the Philistines will come down against me in Gilgai, and I have not asked the favor of the Lord. See, he never asked God. He just did this on his own. So I forced myself and offered a burnt offering. He began to offer God some uh, oxen and things like that, thinking that he was doing good. Because that's all he knew what to do. But it wasn't right. It didn't, it didn't please God. Samuel said to Saul, you have acted foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. If you would have waited and listened to God, you would have been the king forever. But now because you disobeyed your disobedience to God, now you're going to pay a price. I'm not getting no amen. When we disobey God, you're going to pay a price. Amen. If you obey God, you're going to be blessed. He'll bless your, your uh, obedience. There's always a blessing following obedience. And there's always trouble following disobedience. Can I get an amen? amen. But now your kingdom shall not endure, verse 14. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart. He wasn't choosing David because of his character. He was choosing David because of what he was going to do in David's life. And knew, he knew that David would answer. He knew that David would do what he asked him to do. So he says, I'm choosing him out of my own heart. As the Lord, and the Lord has uh, appointed him as ruler over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Samuel is talking to the king and telling him, you're going you're gonna to be out, bro. You're not going to be the king no more. God has chosen a new king, one after his own heart, one that will follow. And that happens in, in Christianity. Some of you guys are supposed to be pastors. Some of you are supposed to be evangelist prophets. Some of you are supposed to be a pillars of a church. But you won't obey God. So he says, I'm not going to choose you, even though you were chosen. I'm not going to choose you. I'm going to choose someone else. I'm not the smartest person in this room, and I thank God for that. I'm not the sharpest person in this room, and I thank God for that. There's sharper people. There's smarter people in this room. But God chose me. And I've questioned that many a times in my life. Why did you choose me? And I got a phone call from a sister on the way to ministering to some people. And I was asking that. She wasn't even in the car. I was in, God, in the car all by myself. And I'm crying to the Lord. Why did you choose me? This is many years ago. Why did you choose me? I speak Ebonics. I don't even speak correct English. I didn't even graduate from high school. Why did you choose me? And the phone call comes in and I'm full of tears. Snob sobbing before and snobbing and everything before God. And I pick up the phone and she says, I have a word of the Lord for you, Pastor. Can I give it to you? And I said, yes, give it to me, Edmana. And she said, the Lord says he chose you like if she was there. I'm headed to Riverside. She lives out in Cerritos, Downey area. The Lord said he chose you because you would obey him. Amen. That's heavy. That's a trip. On what God does. Amen. God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. 
He chooses the poor people of the world to confound the rich. Amen. He chooses the weak people of the world to confound the strong. So God has chosen us. Every one of you sitting here under my voice, you've been chosen by God to serve him and to honor him. And some of you have not. Amen. And some of you have not stepped into your purpose. You have not stepped into your destiny or the path of your destiny because of disobedience. The road is here and you're over here going this way. But the road is that way. And I, I pray to God that you would come back, go around what you have to go around with, and you find the path and you begin to walk with him again. Because God is not a God that forgets. You come back, you repent, God will establish you again. But it's going to take you repenting, telling them you were wrong. I was arrogant. I was pride, prideful, Lord. Forgive me my sin. I didn't listen to you. And you'll be honest. I didn't want to listen to you, Father. Be honest with God. You're not going to hurt his feelings. And he'll forgive you. And he'll release you of all that. And, he's gonna, and he'll cleanse you of your unrighteousness. And you begin to live a life. A life for Christ. Many people here that have been restored and redeemed by God. Amen. As you come. And you may blow it along the walk. You may trip. You may fall. You may scrip your knees and, and sin and all that stuff. Because you are going to sin. Don't think because you get saved you're not going to sin. You are. You're going to lie. You're going to cheat. You're going to manipulate. But we're going to learn to do that less and less as we walk with God. We learn how to live a holy life and a righteous life before God. Saul didn't do that. And God didn't accept him. God removed him as king of Israel. Good looking dude. Six, five, six, eight. Big dude, they said. Head up. Uh, shoulders over the heads of other people. He was just tall, taller than them. And that's why the people wanted him. He's a good-looking dude. He's big. He's strong. Look at him. But he didn't know how to lead. He didn't know how to put God first. And we must learn that as Christians, to put God first. Don't put that man, don't put that woman first. It's God, family, work, church. And then ministry. Amen? Amen? But God is first in everything. Amen. Without God, we're nothing. Amen? We are nothing without God. And God blesses our lives when we say, Father, you're number one. I surrender my life. Yesterday we did baptisms. We baptized about 12, 15 people. I hope they took it to heart. I hope they were baptized and surrendered their lives as they went underwater. And when they came up, they're going to live that righteous life before God. A life that is for God. And he knows the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end. God knows what you're going to do. He knows you're going to blow it. But guess what? He still loves you. That's heavy, huh? That we can be blow it and God still loves us. But if we blow it with each other, we have conditional love. Amen? So here we go. Let's go with 15. Then Samuel rose and went to Gilgai and uh, Jeba and uh, Benjamin. And Samuel uh, numbered the people who uh, were present with him, about 600 men. Now Saul and his son Jonathan and the people who were present with them were staying at uh, Jeba of uh, Benjamin while the Philistines camped in uh, Michmash. And the raiders came from the camp. The Philistines in three companies, one company uh, toward uh, Ophrah and the other land of, I don't know that word, uh, Shaul, and the other company to, uh, turned toward the Beth Haran and another company toward uh, the border of, which overlooks the valley of Zebim toward the, toward the wilderness. They were attacking on every side. I'm going to finish it. 
They were attacking on any side. Now no blacksmith could be found at all in the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, otherwise the Hebrew, Hebrews will make swords and spears. They went after their strength. Men that can make spears and can make swords, and they wiped them out or they took them captive. For they wouldn't advance the kingdom of God. The enemy goes after your strength. And he'll go after your past. That's the first thing he's going to use. He's going to use your past where you won't get to your future. And there's a lot of Christians that are hung up in their past. They're stuck. They still remember when they were hurt when they were 15 years old. Remember their sixth grade boyfriend got stolen by their best friend, and now they don't trust nobody, you know. That happened when you were a kid, you know, right? Amen? You're, you're mad at little dumb stuff and ugly stuff that has no significance in life any longer, but yet you hold on to it. So we never get to move ahead. We never get to move forward in the things of God. And we don't even get to believe God because we're so stuck on our past. We still got people that are 60, 70 years old still listening to music of 1960 and 50s. Got quiet real quick. And you go right back to where you were at. When you were 23, when you were 19. Right? Listen, Grand Funk Railroad, listen to some Zeppelin, listen to some Midnighters. You're right back at it. That's the enemy using his ploy to keep you there. So it's not good to listen to that music. You can go in and do what you want to do, but it, it's not good. It doesn't bless you. It doesn't honor you, and it doesn't honor God. It keeps you back. Well, Christian music's boring. Well, you got to find some Christian music. They have all kinds of Christian music now that you can enjoy. And you can like. Can I get an amen? amen. Some of the guys looking at me like, mm. <laughs> Pastor, I, I, I work outside and I have to listen to music. Yeah, you don't have to listen to that kind of music. Amen. So all of Israel went down to the Philistines each to sharpen their plowshare, uh, his uh, matnock, his ox, and his hoe. And charged the two-thirds of a shekel for the plowsheds, for the uh, mattox, for the forks, and for the axes, and to fix the holes. So came out about one day of battle, and neither sword nor spear was found in the hands of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan. But they were found with Saul and his Jonathan. And the garrisons of the Philistine went out to the pass of Mik uh, Mikmash. God still gave them victory. God still blessed them. Just like us here today. You still have victory. You're alive. You're well. Amen. All you got to do is just change the direction of path. It's very simple. You want to overcome, but you're not willing to discipline yourself. You're not willing to follow Christ or God's word and get to the better land, the promised land. Exactly. No one wants to serve. Everyone wants to be a leader. No Indians, but a lot of cheese. I'm a leader of a church, and I have a lot of leaders that are not even leaders in my church, but they get my attention, you know. I got to tell you this, and I got to tell you that, and I got to go in your office. And, and you're like, oh, my God. Who let this guy in the office, you know? <laughs> And it's, it's learning, you got to learn to be a servant before you can be a chief. You got to learn to follow God's word. Because if God puts you on top right away, you're going to get big headed. You're going to become a pompous. You're going to become arrogant. And when you fall off that arrogance, when you fall off that pride, you're going to be hurt and you're going to be offended. And then you're going to walk away from church. You're going to walk away from God for what man did and what you did. We never look at our faults. Well, okay, I don't look at my faults. We look at other people's faults. We're always pointing fingers. You did it. One, two, three, pointing back at you. But no one sees that. 
You did it. Your fingers are pointing back at you. We got to learn to take care of our own lane, run our own race. Amen. We got to learn to bless God in our way, the way we bless God and honor God and let God do the work that he begun in you. The Bible says, be confident of this very thing, that the good work the Lord has begun in you, he's going to complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. But quit trying to be the Holy Spirit for other people. And quit, uh, quit uh, prophesying over people. A lot of people want to prophesy and this and that. And they don't even have their lives together. They're not even strong enough or have enough wisdom. And I know God used a, he used an ass before, a donkey, to speak to a prophet. And God will use people of the world to speak to us as children. Right? You guys heard people from the world tell you things and you're like, wait, that's for me. They don't even know what's happening in my life, but they're talking to me. Saul here was about to be dismissed because he wouldn't listen to God. He wanted to do it, do it his own way. And it's not that way. It's God's way. If you go to verse 13, Saul was disqualified from his kingship. Why? Because he lacked character. And his obedience to God, he lacked that. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. And when, I, when I'm looking for a leader in this church, God has taught me this by the Spirit. By the Spirit, his Spirit in me. I'm a leader. And he taught me how to be a leader. And he's teaching me how to be a leader. And I learned some things from men, but I learned a lot of things from the Holy Spirit. So when a, when a person wants to be a leader here, I wait. And I make them wait. I make them wait for like a year. And they're like, come on, pastor. Come on, man. I can prophesy. I can pray. I'm ready to do this, man. Come on. Well, go win some souls next door. Go knock on some doors and show me what you're all about. If you're an evangelist, if you're a prophet, if you're a teacher, if you're a pastor. Amen. If you're, you know, if you're in the fire, go show me in the streets what you got. Oh, I, I don't do that, Pastor. Then you're not the guy for me. Because we got to learn how to be servants before we can be leaders. You got to learn how to follow somebody before you can be a leader. You got to learn this in life. Because life's going to teach you some ugly things. And if you don't listen to it, you're the one that's going to get hurt. And you're the one that's going to fall back and go back to your old man. Because you didn't get what you wanted. Some of you guys have spoiled children. Uh, oh, I guess this side has all the spoiled children over here. Some of you guys spoiled children. Can I get an amen? You guys spoiled children over here too, right? They're spoiled. You guys know they're spoiled. Just don't want to say it right now, you know, but they're spoiled. And how do they act when they don't get their way? When you take their iPad away or their phone. Really? You're going to do that to me? You're going to take away my phone? Really? Really? Oh, my God. You know, they start crying for a phone or for an iPad. And we do that, too, with God as grown-ups. When the Lord says, you hold on right now, we're not going to do that until later on. It's yours, but we have to build some character. We have to build some integrity. We have to build who you are before you can have that because you're going to hurt my people if you don't. There's a lot of people that get a pulpit and they damage people. And people leave church and they leave God. Why? Because of a man. Because of a woman. Instead of God. They get hurt by people and they leave God. And the same thing here. These people chose Saul. They didn't want God as their God and their king. Give us a man like all the other countries have. We want a king. And God is saying, that's not for you. You're my people. You're my special people. You're my peculiar people. I have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light for myself. Yeah. <coughs> and that's what God has done for us. God has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light for himself. To bless you and to honor you. 
But we want to run back to Egypt. Egypt representing our sin. Egypt representing our past. Sometimes we'd rather live in our past than live in our future. I've told many people, you're, you're afraid of success. And I'm not talking about money because in America, you say success. It's about big cars, big, big houses, and money. To me, success is living a joyful life. Living a happy life. Because you got millionaires, you got movie stars that are killing themselves. And they live in glass houses. They live in big houses and they're blowing their brains out. They're OD and it's been since the beginning of time with these people. Because they're not happy. They're looking for something. But God wants us to have life and have life more abundant. But it comes in joy. It comes in gladness. Amen. It comes in happiness. I've said this a thousand times behind this pulpit. You know what makes me happy? For you guys who don't speak in, uh, Spanish, tortillas con huevo, eggs and tortillas mixed together, little beans on the side. I'm a king, baby. Serve that up to me and put a good movie on. I'm like, oh, yeah, a little tapatio. I can only do a little bit, you know. And that's a rich life for me. God wants us to enjoy life. And David learned how to enjoy life. Saul was disqualified from his kingship because of his lack of character and, and his lack of obedience to God. But on the other hand, David was exemplified by God and because of his character. And he was devoted to God. I learned that. I learned that before I even read this story many years ago. I learned to read the book of Psalms. Psalms, the majority written by David and his men. And David was a blow it. You guys all know it. But yet he had a heart after God. God chose him. Because you know why? Even in his mistakes, even in his faults, even in his sin, even in his shortcoming, he knew where to go to God. He knew to worship God no matter what he was going through. And God could hear his heart through the sin. God could hear his heart through the lack of money and being threatened and being chased down, not just by the king Saul, but by his own son later on. His own son wanted to kill him. And yet he still praised God. We get told something, you know, uh, we think you may have cancer. Oh, my God. No praise goes up to God. You're not praising him for the cancer. You're praising him because you know he's the healer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, I know you're my healer. I know you're my deliverer. And I know you won't leave me alone. Because your word says you'll never leave me nor forsake me. No matter what goes on in our lives, you got to learn how to praise God. I had a triple bypass 11 years ago, and when they opened me up, they told me, you have a bad valve in your heart. Praise be to God. I praise God no matter what. I dance before God. I jump up and down, and I run. And I know some of you guys said, he's so silly. For God, I am. For God, I am. He saved my life. They told me they didn't even know how, it was, how, how I was alive when they opened me up because my arteries were all clogged up full of manteca, full of lard, all the buche and tripas and carnitas, all that good stuff, amen? Don't eat that stuff that much no more. I eat it once in a while. I still eat it. Hard-headed, hard-headed. Come on, can I get an amen, amen? You know, come on, some of you people ain't supposed to be having bread and soda pop, but you know what? Can I have some more soda, you know? We ain't supposed to have that stuff. It's not good for the body, amen? You know, but we do it. We do it because we are... Tercos, cabezones, hard-head people. Amen. 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 But David learned how to worship God and how to praise God even in his hard times, in his lonely times. And I tell you, if you learn how to raise your hands when you're by yourself, you can be washing dishes. I come here every day and I clean this place up and I just raise my hands. Father, I thank you and I bless you. I honor you. I love you, Father, more than life itself. 
I love you. Because I know if I die, I'm going to heaven. I know that if I live and stay here on earth, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to tell people about God. So I'm in a win-win situation. I do not lose. Amen. I say I'm going to live and I'm not going to die. I'm going to be blessed and I'm not going to be cursed. I declare those things over my life. They've been testing me ever since I had that operation. You know what my heart doctor says? There's nothing wrong with you. He says, your, your arteries are probably got uh, a little clogged up like the size of a pinhead. He says, that's all. He says, you're doing real well. My cholesterol is 125, guys. Some of you guys wish you could have 125, right? You know, that's God. That's high for my doctor. He says, I need you to have 100 or less. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy just wants me to be a vegetarian here, you know. <laughs> But God blesses us. He's the blessing. And he wants to give you what your heart's desires. As you begin to praise God, as you begin to live for God, your desires are going to change. It's not going to be that big old house. It's not going to be that fine dude because you already had the fine dude. That fine dude belongs to somebody else now. And you're probably saying, I thank you, Lord. Right? Some of you, right? And that fine woman is gone. Praise be to God, you're saying. Amen? Amen? What we have to learn how to do is be content where we're at. Yes. Follow what God has asked us to do. And God will ask you to do some things that for you it's difficult. Yes. But through him, all things are possible. Yes. To love your stepchildren like if they were your own. Yes. It can get difficult. He looks up at me. <laughs> but you still love him no matter what. You still bless him no matter what. You can have sickness in your body. I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm not going to trip on that. God gives me so long to live, that's what he gave me. Amen. If I get to live to be 65, 75, 85, I'm going to live my life to the fullest. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to have a good time. Amen. In Christ Jesus, live your lives. Honor your lives. Because you only get one opportunity. You only get one life. And then you go to the eternal. It's going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. There's only two choices. Amen. That's where we got to go. There's no in-betweens. I'm going to be here for a bit until they pray me out. No. The Bible says it's, it's uh, ordained of God for a man to die one time. Amen. And then comes judgment. So you know where you're going. And what we have to learn how to do is obey God. Amen. God has something. Last scripture right here. Go to Jeremiah 29, 11. It's a very, very uh, faithful one. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose. Quit looking at your mistakes. Quit looking at your sin, your, your, your back lifestyle, what you had before. Quit doing that. That's going to defeat you. It, you're never going to live a different life. Come on, I'm speaking to people here. I know that, right? You'll never experience that new life. Ray, I can see the new life in you now, you know. I can see the gladness. Yesterday I was watching you. I'm like, man, that brother's happy. Look at him sitting there by the fire. He's smiling, talking about things he likes. That's a beautiful thing. Amen. Did you see that yesterday, Jonathan and Ray? He was happy being around Christians, right? Amen. Weren't you happy too, Mio? All right, amen. God has that for us. He says right here, this is the Lord. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God doesn't think bad towards you. You can do bad. You can do ugly. God's not going to think bad of you. I don't think bad of my son. None of my sons. And I have a son that, oh, my God, Tasmanian, baby. You know. But I love that boy. I love that boy. He's my boy. You know what I mean? I love my kid. No matter what. They're mine. That's how we are with God. God loves you no matter what. Amen. He gave his son for you, amen. He loves you, and I want you to know that. 
You ain't got to perform for God. You ain't got to be on Mrs. Goody Good Toots and all that stuff. You be who you are and God will straighten you out as you walk. As you walk with God. For he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Imagine that. God Almighty, this is what he thinks of us. To give you a future and a hope. A better life. That's what hope means. That you would have a better life in the future. That's what God wants to do. You just have to give God the opportunity, Cindy. Father, have your way with me. I give you my life. I surrender my life. I need you more than I need Eddie. I need you, Lord. We got to do that. Sometimes we look to people too much and too often. We need to look to God. And God will set you free. That man will bring you happiness when he gives you the check. After the check, he's going to bring you heartache. And that's the way it is in life. But God doesn't do that. God gives you a joy that surpasses your understanding, a peace that surpasses your understanding, a joy that's everlasting. And you can be happy no matter what's in your life or what's in your body. You can rejoice. You can dance. You can jump up and down. When you have the opportunity, do it. Because you don't know what's going to happen. God may save your life. I'm alive today by a miracle of God. My doctor said, you should have been dead. Because of God, I'm alive. And I don't care what you think about me. When you see me jumping up and down, you see me doing a little dance before God. I'm like, and you guys look look at this dude. I don't care. You didn't save me. You weren't there and delivered me. Amen. God saved me. And I rejoice in the Lord. I rejoice in him and I have my breath, my being Because of him. No one's promised tomorrow, but you are promised eternity. And where you spend eternity, that's up to you. God has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. He wants you to live. And he wants you to live a happy life. Get rid of the name Sad Girl. They call me Sad Girl. Get rid of that name. That's That's a nasty name. I wouldn't want to be called sad boy. You don't know, walk around all sad all the time. Because that's what they, you know, that's your little nickname. You know, call me joy. You know what I mean? <laughs> call me peace. Call me something else. Call me something good. Amen? Amen. When people call, say my last name, my last name is a Hebrew last name, but I'm Mexican, you know. But my, but my Hebrew, uh, we have a Hebrew last name. It means blessed. Amen. So when... They used to call us by our last name, Baruch, all the time. In junior high school, high school, because you played sports and they call you by the last name, right? I always said Baruch, and I was like, yeah. Because they're saying, blessed. Hey, blessed. Blessed. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Even though I wasn't feeling blessed, I was like, yes, yes. Because I was out there running amok. But God does the work in our lives. And he wants to change your lives. It's to change your life if you just let them. And it's one step at a time. One step at a time. Men come to me and say, Pastor, I still get high, I still drink. I said, what's that got to do with God? Girls, you know, I'm cheating on my husband. What's that got to do with God? Absolutely nothing. That's you. That's your flesh. Give yourself to the Lord, and the Lord will remove all that. And it takes time. Sometimes it happens like that, and at times it takes time. Because not everyone has stopped lying. Not everyone has stopped manipulating. Can I get an amen? Those are things that aren't seen so brightly. But the other sins you see. But there's sins inside of us that we hide, and nobody knows. Right? We hide it. But God wants you to get rid of that stuff. And I talk about sin behind my pulpit. I'm not afraid to talk about it. This is how we're going to get healed. This is how we're going to get right. I'm not judging you. I'm not called to be a judge. I'm called to be a preacher. I'm not called to be a judge. God is going to judge us all. Come that day and it's coming soon. Because you can see the world, how bad it's getting. 
Evil is good now, and good is evil. That's how the world sees it. And we as Christians can't go along with that stuff. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's sin, call it sin. Oh, I'm shacking up with my boyfriend. No, you're committing an adultery. You're in sin. Just call it. Repent. God will forgive you. Oh, you're judging me. Ain't nobody judging you. I don't have the power to judge you. But I have the power to correct you because I love you. I want you to live right. I want you to live whole. Amen? I want you to be all you can be, Pascual. You got so much in you, boy, man. You got a lot of joy in you, brother. Amen? We just need to, we just need to be exhibited, exhibit that thing. Jill, you're a funny guy. Be a funny guy. That's who you are. Don't let her tell you you're not funny. You're funny. <laughs> My wife always used to tell me, oh, you're a dud. We're funny in our own little way, every one of us. Funny looking. <laughs> funny talking. <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> Amen. Let's all stand before the Lord. We're going to finish this off next week. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the, the flowers you guys see up here were donated by the uh, Mancinas right there. Come on. Their one-year wedding anniversary. Can I tell them the truth, Mihana? Anna and Fred? They lived in sin. Right? When you guys came here. They lived in sin for 15, I don't know how many years. Long time, huh? 19 years. They lived with each other. But as you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, they knew I wasn't trying to condemn them or judge them. I was trying to get their life right. Amen. They got married a year ago right here at the church. Amen. <laughs> Just want to get their life right. That's all. We're not here to judge nobody. We're here to help people. Amen. But sometimes you got to hear some bad news before it gets good. Amen. Your cholesterol is high. you got to stop eating all the fatty food. Oh, he's judging me. No, he's helping you. Your sugar's high. Quit eating so many tortillas and the pan dulce. Cut it out. You know, you can't have chocolate with that stuff. Cut it out. Oh, he's judging me. No, he's trying to get you healthy. The doctor's trying to help you. He's not judging you. He's helping you. Same thing with the preacher man. I'm just helping you spiritually. Amen. This is a hospital where the sinner comes, where the sick comes. And we learn and we get healthy. And we apply the word to our lives and we get better. That's all. I'm no better than you. But you're no better than me. We're just better than what we used to be. That's all. Amen. You're a better person now, Pasquale. I'm a better person. God did a work in our lives. That's all we're looking for. That God would bless us and God would honor us. And we would honor him and we would be a blessing to him. Amen. Amen. Men of a higher standard this Saturday. Come on out, men. <laughs> Invite somebody. It's a potluck type breakfast that every man brings uh, something his wife cooked, you know. <laughs> Now, there's some men that cook real well. So, you know, uh, come on down. Yeah, amen. Lefty right there raising his right hand. You know. <laughs> no, Ozzy, Ozzy. Uh, he's a good cook. Yeah, so bring your favorite dish. This is the Women of Virtue. They were last week. There are like 64 women, Bobby. 64 women went up there to the mountain. That's beautiful. We go out to the mountain. This was their first time going this year. Uh, the ladies of Turning Point Fellowship, Women of Virtue. The men will be going in November. If you want to come, talk to us. You know, we'll sign you up, put you on the list, and you can go. It costs 180 bucks. you know. If you don't have that money, talk to somebody. There's brothers that will sponsor you. There's brothers that will go half with you. There's brothers that will pay, pay 50, 60 bucks, and you pay 100 bucks. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll help you out. There's brothers here to help you out. That's what we're here for, to help each other out. Not you, Ray. You got a good job. You're paying. 
But you can pay for somebody, you know what I mean? You can always be a blessing for other people. You know, if you got a good job, pay it. Pay 250, I'm gonna pay 250, I'm gonna pay for somebody else that they could go. It's a beautiful time up in the mountain. June 5th, next Sunday, we're gonna have potluck. Amen. We have potluck every first Sunday. So bring your favorite dish. I guess that's their favorite dish. That's one of my favorites too. Amen. <laughs> cheeseburger. Love them cheeseburgers. Boy, they ain't good for me, but I will have one. You know, so uh, we're having potluck. Don't forget we have the new beginners, the new believers class. Amen. <laughs> Sign up. We got Minister Leonard right there. Raise your hand, Minister Leonard. Then we, every Thursday we have Bible study. We go right through the Bible. We go right through the Bible. We're in the book of Galatians right now. And we go chapter by chapter, line by line. I want you to learn the Bible. I don't want you to learn cliches and things pastors say, you know. I don't want you to learn that. I want you to know the word of God, hide it in your heart. Then you don't sin against God. Amen. You learn to live. Prayer every Tuesday night on Zoom. You can see Bobby. Raise your hand, Bobby. You can see Bobby for that. If you need prayer, see Bobby. Get online with her and they'll pray for you. You don't have to know how to pray. They're going to pray for you. And we're called Turning Point Fellowship. You matter. Your story isn't over yet. Amen. First time visitors. Do we have first time visitors? Your first time ever here at Turning Point Fellowship? Raise your hand for me if you are first time visitors right there. Raise your hands up high. They're going to give you a card right there. Amen. Keep your hands up. They're going to give you a visitor card right there. You can fill that out with your email, your name, and things like that. Someone will contact you just to thank you for coming out to the church. And right there, you know, if you filled it out and you put your email and said, oh, you know what, never mind, don't, don't contact me. We're only going to contact you for special events. We're not going to bug you. We're not going to sell your information. We're Christians. We don't do that stuff. Amen. But what we're going to do is we are going to call you, say we're having a women's meeting. We're having a guest speaker. If you'd like to come on out and be part of it, we do things like that. Amen, you'll get an email. Are you getting emails? All right. Got to get those emails out there. Our members, are you getting emails? Yes. Mm. Excuse me? Oh, they get text in church, he says. Okay, you're getting a text through the church. Bombs, boom, big ones, right? Amen. So doing that, you matter, your story isn't over yet. Keep on praising God. Keep on blessing God. You newcomers, give us another opportunity to speak into your lives. Come on out, you know, this Thursday. If not Thursday, come out Sunday. Let us speak into your life. Let us be a blessing to you as you guys will be a blessing unto us. Let us pray as we dismiss. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this word. Your word that has fallen on good ground, the hearts and the souls of your people. Your word to produce is life, Lord. It produces hope, faith, love, kindness meekness, gentleness, Father, perseverance and patience, forgiveness, Lord. This is your word, Father, being planted in our hearts and producing these fruits, Lord. So we thank you and we bless you for the word. We know the faith has come, Father, for we heard the word, we read the word, and it was explained to us, Lord. So we thank you for the word, Father, that causes faith to grow within us. I thank you, Father, for the divine protection. As the people leave this place, Father, I say no harm, no breakdown, no flat tires, no accident, Father, not even a speeding ticket, just a safe drive home to and from. I pray for their children right now in Jesus' name, that their children are divinely protected, watched over, Lord God, by you and your angels that are camped about them, surrendering, uh, surrounding them, Father, from all harm and evil, Lord God. I thank you, Father, as they lay down tonight, Father, that these people will rest. Their minds will rest, their hearts will rest, their souls will rest. And they'll wake up tomorrow morning, Father, and not say, oh, it's Monday. They're going to say, oh, man, it's Monday. And they're going to enjoy their Monday and the rest of their week, Lord God. They're the ones that are going to have a bounce. They're the ones that are going to have a smile, Lord God, blessing you and honoring you, Father. So bless them, Lord God, and keep them. Let this word not be stolen, Father, but seal it in their hearts. That they'll walk it out, Father, by faith. In Jesus' name.
And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we're having a birthday party, a celebration for a young uh, lady, a 15-year-old little girl. We're, you're all invited over there, hot dogs, hamburgers, all on the house over there. Uh, I think there's potato salad. There's probably some 